Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with a bit of a follow-up to my How to Read Stats in Total War Warhammer. So today we're going to be looking at the 30th Anniversary Regiments of Renown, and I wanted to go through with you guys and do a little bit of a stat analysis, just to kind of show you the process I go through when we get new content. Um, in regards to my previous video, I would definitely recommend you go watch that, so you uh, <clears throat> kind of get... Where I'm coming from with a lot of these different values and things and uh, also just to kind of get a feel for how to read stats because my goal is I'm gonna do this with the regiments of renown and I may do it for Norska as well and for the Queen and the Crone content um, but I just kind of want to go through different things and show you guys the process that I go through so that you can do the same when new content comes out in the future you can go through have a look uh, at the stats and kind of try and figure things out for yourselves again that's kind of my goal with this series, so let's get straight to it. So first up on the list, uh, Beastmen got some Regiments of Renown in the uh, 30, 30th Anniversary bunch, so let's go ahead and take a look. Starting with the Destroyers of Drakwal. These guys are a Ungor Spearman Herd with Shield, so we'll get a base unit to compare to. <clears throat> In terms of their stats, they have much better melee defense, which is very important. If you guys have watched my video, which again, you should do, uh, you'll know that melee defense is particularly important because the base chance to hit is pretty low, so if you can get high melee defense, it's not that hard to get a pretty low chance to hit, and your unit will hold for a lot longer. <clears throat> So they have good melee defense, they also have poison attacks, which for a low tier sphere is uh, pretty common. Uh, you'll note that the uh, Helebrani and many other low tier spear regiment of renown, you know, the uh, Scorpion Legion for the Tomb Kings, are a similar, uh, similar theme. So these guys follow along that theme, of course, bonus versus large, all the typical traits of an Ungor Spearman herd. Uh, really what you're getting is the uh, extra leadership then their poison attacks, and the extra melee defense. Uh, next up on the list, we've got the Gore Herds with Shields. Regiment of Renown, the Blackhorns Ravagers. So these guys, again, much better combat stats. They also have 20 more armor, which is always nice. Uh, again, armor w helps mitigate non-armor piercing damage by percentage, so that extra uh, <clears throat> 20 armor means they'll be mitigating between about 17 to 35 percent of the non-AP damage rather than, uh, you know, 7 to 15, so that's, that's pretty decent. Also, uh, extra leadership and combat stats as they are Regiment of Renown and their special trait, they have stock so they remain hidden <clears throat> similar to uh, Ungor units and they also have this rowdy trait which gives them extra leadership and perfect vigor. Uh, perfect vigor is particularly important in very long grinding games. Uh, if you can keep these guys alive they'll stay fresh into that late game. It's very very strong. <clears throat> Next up on the list we've got the best gore herd with halberds, essentially, <laughs> the uh, Koroks Man Rippers. So they're a Bestigor herd that has a halberd. Uh, you can see they have less overall weapon strength, slightly, by one, but they have a bonus versus large, less charge bonus, but much better melee defense. Uh, 20 better melee defense, which is pretty significant. They also have charge defense against large, as they are a halberd unit, as you would expect. So let's go ahead and take a look at bonus versus large of 16, which is pretty considerable. So a uh, bit of a different role. Um, very, very strong overall, though. Best score are a pretty good unit, and the Korox Men Rippers, if, you, if you're expecting large armored units, these guys are a great pick. Let's move on now to the next one, Centigors with Great Weapons, the Sons of Goros. <clears throat> these guys have magic attacks, which is very important in a multitude of matchups. Uh, lots of physical resistance going around in game two, so you'll definitely want to bring these guys. They also have 35 more armor, bringing them up to 70, which is pretty decent. 70 isn't amazing, it's pretty good. You'll be mitigating between 35 to 70 percent of the non-armor piercing damage, as opposed to Centigors, which have 35. Uh, they also have obviously better combat stats and leadership, and they also have the Guardian trait. So they give 18% physical resistance to all lords and heroes within that area of effect. Very strong trait. Um, <clears throat> most beastmen lords, I mean Malagor and Borker, you're probably not going to get that much use out of this because they're infantry lords, they're not typically going to be running in a mobility engagement, but if you have the beast lord or Kazrak on the chariot, it can be a solid pick. Next up on the list, we've got the Minotaurs with shields. 
the uh, good old Butchers of Kalkengard. These guys are the Moo Cows. The, uh, they've got the dappled kind of, uh, I forget the, the breed, Holstein, I, I think it is, uh, sort of pattern. They also have the udders on their belt buckles. Super cool looking. These guys have better combat stats, obviously. They also cause terror and have regeneration. So regeneration, standard regen trait, weakness to fire, but it does mean they replenish hit points, which in and of itself is incredibly strong, and then also causing terror means, number one, they're immune to terror, and obviously they cause terror to other units that are not immune to it. So very strong regiment of renown, very expensive, but uh, can definitely pay for itself. Whoops, we'll go ahead and dismiss that. And last but not least, certainly not least by any stretch of the imagination, the regiment of renown, Saigor, Eye of Morsleeb. So the Eye of Morsleeb has a couple of extra goodies here. Uh, number one is it does magic damage. So again, lots of physical resistance going around in game two. Typically, it doesn't matter as much when you're dealing with artillery because it does so much uh, damage to individual models that it will, it will just kill them outright anyway. But, you know, against uh, high tier lords and heroes, things like that, that have physical resistance, it definitely does make a difference. Uh, so that is nice. It also has this this ability here, Warp Gaze, which is a, a 12 second, pretty short duration, pin in place ability. It's the only hard snare available to the Beastmen, so that in and of itself is very strong. Of course, being a Regiment of Renown, it has a much better fire rate and uh, is much more accurate than the regular Saigor, which those two <laughs> combined make this thing absolutely devastating. So. Very, very strong Regiment of Renown. <clears throat> Let's move on now to Britonia. Yes, indeed. All the chivalry and uh, Fourth Lady intensifies here as we go into it. First on the list, we've got the Battle Pilgrims, Holy Wardens of La Maisenthal. Now, uh, you guys may or may not know, I am not really a fan of Battle Pilgrims. I think they're really not very cost effective. I mean, you compare these guys' combat stats without Frenzy. Uh, they're more or less equal to Empire State Troops. They're actually worse than Empire Swordsmen. Um, but they do have the Frenzy trait, which is okay, I guess. But just overall, I'm not really a fan. Well, the Holy Wardens of La Maisenthal, though, have much better combat stats, despite the fact that they're a dual-wield unit. They even have better melee defense. They have better weapon strength, which is always nice. Better charge bonus, leadership, and they also do magic and fire damage. So in certain matchups, I think these guys can be pretty decent. I don't know that they're really that viable in some matchups, but against, like, for example, the Skaven or the Greenskins, I think these guys would probably be a pretty good pick. Uh, <clears throat> not too much else to say there. Not a lot going on. They do have dual wield, so they don't have a missile block chance. That is one important thing to note. Um, but let's move on next to the Foot Squires. Uh, we're also going to include a a meta arm with pole arm here, because these guys are indeed, similar to the Korox Man Rippers, a halberd variant of the foot squires so you can see they have uh, slightly more armor better leadership and much better melee defense only slightly more attack but significantly better melee defense and in the f up in the 50 range is really good especially for an anvil type unit where with bretonia you know you typically be you're gonna want to get your damage out of your cavalry um so <clears throat> these guys are definitely a good anvil type unit to help uh with the hammer of the cavalry so yeah they also have less weapon strength overall with a bonus versus large if we compare they actually have the same weapon strength as the uh, men at arms with pole arms obviously because they have the same weapon same charge bonus as well uh, for the men at arms with pole arms so uh, yeah great stuff very useful unit overall uh, let's go ahead and move on now to the goods the uh, we'll, we'll first just uh, pay dues to the mounted yeoman archers uh, they're all right for the cost. I don't know that they're super cost effective. They're uh, essentially the same cost as uh, Lyrian Reavers actually uh, Don't have that great of combat stats, but they do have poison missiles and a little bit better leadership as well They also have a better charge bonus, which is uh, always nice So a decent unit overall Wardens of Montfort the uh, Mounted Yeoman Archer Regiment of Renown Next up we've got the Knights Errant Regiment of Renown. Now Knights Errant are an interesting unit uh, the Regiment of Renown Knights Errant in particular has a better missile block chance, 55% as opposed to the 35% uh, of the regular ones. 
They also have this Frenzy trait, which for cavalry is awesome because it gives a charge bonus buff in particular. Uh, so when you're in the Lance Formation and you have that Frenzy active, these guys actually have a pretty solid charge bonus for an 850 point unit of cavalry. Uh, they also have Immune to Psych when that Frenzy is up. No bonus versus large or anything for the Knights Errant, but still a great low tier uh, shock cavalry for the cost. Next up on the list, we've got the uh, Regiment of Renown, Knights of the Realm, the Knights of the Lionhearted. Now, obviously, much better combat stats. They also have a few other goodies as well. They cause fear. No terror, but fear. So pretty good in, uh, in low leadership matchups. They also have magic damage, which again, a lot of physical resistance going around in game two. So that's always useful. Uh, encourage. So they provide leadership buffs similar to heroic units uh, to all units nearby. And that's it for these guys. But uh, overall, of course, better leadership, combat stats, all that jazz. But a very strong Regiment of Renown and a nice, like, kind of cheaper alternative to a Grail Knight. They don't have all the bells and whistles of a Grail Knight, but uh, they are a significantly cheaper. 300 points is a pretty, pretty substantial. So uh, next up, we've got the Regiment of Renown Questing Knights. Now... Uh, the Companions of Quenel, a very strong unit. We'll go ahead and take a look at their traits. They've got quite a bit going on here. So uh, first thing you'll notice is obviously their much better combat stats, uh, particularly plus 12 melee defense is really nice. 47-48 for the Companions of Quenel is a really strong combat stats for the unit of cavalry. Uh, likewise, they also have fire resistance and the blessing of the lady. So fire resistance, of course, fairly self-explanatory. Blessing of the lady is the physical resistance resistance trait that the Grail Knights get. So uh, yeah, very strong in uh, they get that physical resistance, makes them quite a bit tankier, especially because uh, Questing Knights don't have a shield, so they don't have a missile block chance, makes them much stronger. I really like these guys, they're probably the best regiment of renown uh, for Bretonia in my opinion um, and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so Bretonia got some uh, some good stuff in terms of their regiments of renown next up on the list we're gonna go all the way to uh, let's see here <clears throat> the wood elves and yeah so first up on the list we've got eternal guard with shields so uh, <clears throat> Yeah, Turtle Guard with shields uh, that are unbreakable. <laughs> and uh, similar to many of the other um, unbreakable regiments of renown, like the AP Gloonies and the Sigmar Sons, these guys are going to be almost an auto pick in every army. Uh, unbreakable is just such a strong trait to have, especially for an armor piercing anti large spear unit with very good melee defense. So, Winter Heart Guard, very strong. They also have charge defense against all expert charge defense, so even infantry charging these guys won't get a charge bonus. And they also have the encourage trait, so not only will they never route, but they'll also encourage other nearby troops to stay and fight. Very nice unit to have in the front line. Uh, with your other low-ish tier. I say low tier. I mean, they're still elves. They still have excellent leadership, these uh, Eternal Guard, but uh, even still, very strong. Uh, next up, we're going to go to the Wildwood Ranger Regiment of Renown. These guys have uh, a different weapon loadout. They have the Spear and Shield of the Eternal Guard rather than the Glaive uh, of the Wildwood Rangers, so they have different weapon strength as a result and a different combat stat profile, but they also have a missile block chance and some other goodies, so we'll go ahead and take a look. Oh, there's quite a bit going on here, so first things first, they've got Vanguard deployment, and they also have stock, so they won't be spotted until someone's very close. Likewise, the different weapon loadout does mean they have a different weapon strength, 33 as opposed to 42 total, but they do have a base bonus versus a large Whereas the Wildwood Rangers do have this ability where if they're in the woods they get a bonus versus large. The Wardens of Kithral have the same thing. Um, but they also have Armor Sundering and again, very good combat stats. So I really like these guys for the cost. They're very cost effective and that Armor Sundering uh, in certain matchups can be very, very strong. Next up, we've got the War Dancer with Azrai Spear, which is more expensive than the War Dancers with than the, the Wardens of Kithral. But you can see why: 64 melee defense. So the only the only way these ladies are going down is probably by shooting them 
but uh, they have some very strong abilities as well. They've got Frenzy, which the regular War Dancers do not have, so that's always strong. And uh, you'll see they are immune to Psych baseline, uh, War Dancers are, but that Frenzy just gives them the extra charge bonus melee attack, weapon damage. They also have Loic Shrouds, so they can give themselves stock and extra speed and only spotted at very close range. So, uh, very strong. You can pop that, sneak into the right position, and ambush a high-value target. Uh, next up on the list, uh, a unit that I'm sure some of you have faced in multiplayer already and have had a grand time trying to take down. These guys are incredibly strong. The Hawk Eyes of Drakira, the Regiment of Renowned Way Watchers. So, you can see they have obviously better combat stats. Uh, the better missile damage is just due to their better refire rate, and uh, they also have a couple of abilities here. Smoke Bomb, which makes, uh, it's the same, same ability that the Nasty Skulkers have, it makes them incredibly hard to catch. I mean, these guys are just s super slippery, um, especially when they're being well protected. They also have the Discourage trait on their missile damage, so it makes them very good at routing off stuff. Besides the fact that they do an insane amount of damage, uh, that Discourage trait just adds on top of it, and it means that they're very good at routing off uh, lower tier units. Obviously, you don't really want them shooting at lower tier units too much, but uh, let's say you have like an artillery piece or something, you can shoot them quite easily and do quite a bit of damage. Super strong regiment of renown. Uh, you guys are probably going to see a lot of these Hawkeyes with Jakira. Uh, next up, we've got the regiment of renown Wild Riders with shields, Wild Hunters of Kurnus. These are another guardian type cavalry. They don't really have a lot else going on, just obviously the better combat stats and a leadership. And then the guardian trait here, uh, which can be potentially very strong for the Wood Elves. That extra physical resistance, always nice. And to round things out, we've got the Regiment of Renown Treekin, the Fire Bark Elders. These guys give an area of effect uh, fire resistance. It's not, uh, it used to be that it just reduced the weakness to fire, but now it's actually a straight up fire resistance. So that it even helps the elf type units, it doesn't only help the forest spirits. But yeah, it does give plus 25% flame resistance to all units in area of effect. They themselves also have 70% fire resistance and do flaming magic damage. So a very strong regiment of renown overall, particularly if you're trying to go with a tree type build. I would definitely recommend you bring the Firebark Elders in any matchup where you think your opponent might bring lore of fire or other types of fire damage. And that's pretty much it for the Wood Elves. Now we'll finish things up with the Warriors of Chaos. Their regiments of renown, which are all, well, for the most part, are super strong. Starting with the Mirror Guard. These are Sigvald's uh, personal bodyguards, supposedly. Uh, they're just better all around than Chaos Warriors. They're faster, first of all, which is always nice. 38 speed, which is pretty quick for Chaos Warriors, considering they've got 100 armor. That's actually surprisingly fast. They're only 200 points more expensive, so very cost-effective at 950 points. Better leadership, combat stats, and better weapon strength. Interesting. More importantly, they are immune to psychology, so they will not be terrified. They'll stay with Sigvald and fight with him in the pits. Of course, uh, being a, a regiment of renown, uh, kind of sword and board unit, they're a good defensive uh, bodyguard for Sigvald to fight amidst. And we can even compare them to Chosen with Great Weapons, and you can see they're not that far off from Chosen with Great Weapons. So a nice defensive type unit. Next up on the list, we've got the regiment of renown Forsaken, the Demon Spew. These guys have poison attacks. Uh, obviously better combat stats, and then they also have the Swarm of Flies. So minus 5 melee attack in an area of effect, very strong. I do really like the Demon Spew. Uh, obviously the better combat stats, particularly the better melee defense, is really nice for them. Uh, the poison attacks as well means that they can, uh, if they're chasing a, a unit of cavalry, which, I mean, Forsaken definitely can, they have 46 speed, so if you apply that poison, then they can chase units of cavalry more effectively, uh, they can chase down routing units, just makes them a stronger mobility option overall. Uh, next up, we're going to go to the monsters here and take a look at the weird spawn, one of my favorite regiments of renown, uh, regiment of renown chaos spawn, they have obviously better combat stats, they have physical resistance, which the normal Chaos Spawn do not have, of 15%. Always nice, considering Chaos Spawn have only 10 armor. They also have Armor Sundering, which again, very strong trait. 
Uh, I particularly like to pair this with Sarthrail the Everwatcher. You bring Lore of Metal with him, you stack him with the Weird Spawn, and then you stack this Plague of Rust to Overcast. You can get a total of minus 90 armor. It's very, very strong at puning uh, high value infantry. And uh, just overall, I really like these, this uh, Regiment of Renown. Very strong. Speaking of strong, the next one is probably the strongest of all for Chaos, the uh, Regiment of Renown Dragon Ogres, the Summoners of Rage. Uh, obviously better combat stats, particularly 53 melee defense for a unit like this is very, very strong. They also have uh, this Bound Chain Lightning ability, so uh, they can charge it up. They have to be in melee um, to charge it up, but once it is charged up, they have one-time use of Chain Lightning, which is a very strong vortex so it's going to be good for them. They also have magic attacks, again, physical resistance all around in game two. So that is a great trait to have. And uh, we'll, we've got two more left to go through here. The Regiment of Renown Hell Cannon. Similar to the Regiment of Renown Saigor, Regiment of Renown uh, Artillery in general. Uh, it's much better because it's more accurate and has a better refire rate. Uh, these guys also have more ammunition, which is always nice to have. Uh, better combat stats, which eh, doesn't really matter that much for an artillery crew. But they also have this ability here, the Soul Devourer. So, uh, let's see. If an enemy comes within the ability range, 200 meters, then they get plus 40 reload skill. So they're, they already have a better reload skill than the regular Hell Cannon. And then you give them even more reload skill once you come into that area of effect which is uh, what 400 meters 200 meters so that's about half of their range so once you're within about half range they all, they get a significant buff to their fire rate and uh, yeah I, I have used this in a couple of battles and it is super strong so the regiment of renown uh, hell cannon soul of damnation definitely a good pick in some matchups and to round things out, we've got the Swords of Chaos, a Regiment of Renown Chaos Knights. They're uh, significantly more expensive. They have way less unit models, only slightly less less little less, less health though. Um, they have much better weapon strength and uh, better melee defense. Obviously, they have flaming damage and they have armor piercing and anti infantry. So regular Chaos Knights obviously do not have those traits. These guys have armor piercing, anti infantry. They also have the Guardian trait, so very good to run with Archaon. They're kind of meant to be Archaon's personal bodyguard. They've also got this Apocalyptic Charge, which is a map-wide charge speed and speed buff once you get within an area of effect, uh, 70 meters. So very, very strong buff to have. Uh, it only lasts for 41 seconds and only uh, goes off one time, but can be a really nice ch uh, timing push, particularly that charge speed if you're trying to catch... Uh, you know, a lot of skirmish units you can with that uh, with that apocalyptic charge. So that's pretty much it for the 30th anniversary regiments for now. And I thought I would kind of go through that with you guys and show you how I analyze new things. So you can see I just kind of compare, especially with regiments of renown. You can look there at the bottom and see what extra traits pop up and compare their stats one to one. You can see obviously less unit models and all that on these guys. So hopefully that was informative and useful for you guys. I would highly encourage you to go do the same thing. Uh, look through the new regiments of renown. See if you can come up with synergies and uh, you know how different units are meant to be used uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this hope you guys enjoyed watching if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video you'll be notified thank you once again for watching and we'll see you next time